From a bird's eye view, it looks as if Kibbutz Givat Chaim Yichud was always there. The white homes with the red tile roofs under the shade of the old trees, uphill winding sidewalks cutting through lush green lawns, and all surrounded by green fields and orange groves all the way to the horizon. How did you manage to choose such a haven? Often a question asked by visiting tourists. But not always this place was like a haven. Our story begins in 1952 when the kibbutz movement split as a result of ideological differences and some founding members of the old Givat Chaim, together with members from kibbutz Kfar Sold in the north, had to leave their homes and start a new kibbutz by the name of Givat Chaim Ichud. The old founders of the new kibbutz had to start from scratch. At the beginning they erected wooden shacks and small buildings while planting vegetation and grass around them to make it look more homelike. On the bare lands around it they planted orange groves and apple orchards as well as cow sheds and chicken coops and one large canning factory that today is the single largest juice producing company in Israel. In addition, they created a line of services for the members and their families, including a community kitchen and dining room, laundromat, medical and dental clinics, an attached infirmary, wooden metal shops, as well as a garage for all the kibbutz's automobiles and agricultural machinery. The educational framework that was established served all children from the age of birth till 18 by creating nurseries, kindergartens, an elementary, middle, and high school. Cultural activities were promoted by building a local auditorium, library, and clubhouse, public facilities for social and cultural gatherings. Today, there are 500 members living in the kibbutz of three different generations from more than a dozen different countries around the globe. They all live a life of partnership and equality by co-owning the assets and operating them. Some of the members are involved in production, industry, and agriculture, or in the private sector in the nearby cities, and others work within the kibbutz in education and in a range of services. But all, whether doctors, lawyers, teachers, or service workers, benefit equally from the system. All salaries are pooled into one source, and all members receive equal wages and are provided with free health care, education, and housing. Outside of work, today's typical kibbutz member spends most of his or her free time within the family framework, some of which consist of three generations. Kibbutz members are active in self-created cultural events, holiday celebrations, creative craft workshops, field trips, and a range of sport activities, including swimming and water polo games, where the kibbutz teams reach national league and top records. The kibbutz secretary and management body, including all committee members, are voted for by the community. The Kibbutz Secretariat is like a city council in terms of decision-making regarding all community issues. The decision-making process takes place at the General Assembly where all members have the right to vote. The General Assembly deals with all matters including development and growth, education, budget, and accepting new members. Education is perhaps one of the kibbutz's highest priorities. Nurseries, kindergartens, and a regional primary school are all located inside the kibbutz. The kibbutz offers an extraordinary range of extracurricular activities for its children, including horseback riding, various sports, a large arts and crafts center, music center, and a large indoor swimming pool. There is a regional high school located in a neighboring kibbutz. The kibbutz education system places high emphasis on cooperation, humanism, and equality. 
Side by side, the need for excellence and high achievement is combined with social and national values. Almost all the founders of Givat Chaim Ichud are of European descent, and many of them are survivors of the Holocaust who lost their loved ones during World War II. Bet Terezin is a memorial site which contains historical archives that were established by the survivors of this camp, whom of which still live on the kibbutz. Nearby is Bet Vienna, another memorial site which was built thanks to contributions of Vienna's Jewish community and serves as a concert hall. Some of the founders of the kibbutz lost their children in the many unfortunate battles and wars before and since the declaration of the State of Israel. Here in the local cemetery we have buried all the fallen soldiers and right beside them we have built a symbolic tombstone for all our relatives that died during World War II. While senior citizens who live in the city are forced to retire at a certain age, in the kibbutz they tend to keep living a full life. Some insist on working in their original jobs indefinitely, while others take part-time simple kibbutz tasks to fit to their capabilities. The original founders are also involved in the community social life and enjoy diverse activities. At the stage when they need more intensive care, there is a nursing home with the best of medical staff and social facilities. In the dawn of the third millennium, Kibbutz Givat Chaim Ichud faces fundamental changes like many other kibbutzim, and new visions of the future are taking place. The original ideological flame is diminishing as the ideals of cooperation and equality weaken. The sense for individual needs become more apparent. Despite this trend, nothing can take away from the kibbutz its very basic nature of being. A unique multi-generation community who cares for all its members and provides for all their needs, that cultivates its environment and its own culture and insists on simplicity in life and offers a sane substitute to the city rat race. Mm -hmm.